Andy Burkowski here, VGS for Talk Radio AM 640, your one-stop stop for gaming. I am sitting on the second floor of a place that is more blue and beautiful than anything I've seen here today. We're talking PlayStation, and I'm here with Matt from PlayStation Canada. How you doing, Matt? I'm very good, thank you. How are you doing? Thank you. Excellent. I Amazing setup you guys have here. Really, really good. We really uh, we outdid ourselves this year on the booth. We uh, we actually expanded it this way a little bit more, so there's actually a lot more space. Average years we've had anywhere between 200 to 225 interactives. This year we're actually closer to 300. So it's uh, more playable games on the floor this year than any other year we've ever had. I know already in the first day of E3, one of the biggest highlights, without question, I was very fortunate to be second row when it happened was the Sony conference and the explosion, the eruption from the fans during the last quarter of it. What am I possibly referring to that made fans around the world explode with happiness? Yeah, there was a couple of things I think we announced at the show that really I, you know, surprised people, impressed people, and really, I think, helped to really recognize that Sony's listening and that we really, uh, you know, we want to do what's right for the, for the gamer, for the consumer. One was the price. You know, I think a lot of people were wondering where we'd be. Microsoft announced it at $499. They know traditionally we've had, you know, never the cheapest console on the market, usually something that's technically superior, but not always the cheapest. But at $399, I think people were blown away by the price of PS4 and really, really excited about that. Uh, so that was a great announcement for us, certainly. Uh, but, you know, our commitment to gamers was really extended one step further by the way that we approached the whole used game and DRM situation. I mean, you know, we've been watching it closely from Xbox's point of view and kind of how they want to kind of, I don't want to say control content, but how they want to kind of protect their IPs and how they want to monitor stuff. Uh, you know, and we feel very comfortable with the way the business is currently being run today. You go into a store, you buy a piece of software, it's yours, that's your asset. You gave us the $60 for the game you chose to buy. You should have that freedom to be able to, you know, give it to a friend if you want, sell it back to a store if you want, let a friend borrow and play it for a while and give it back to you. Whatever that relationship is that you have with that game and that other party is yours to determine. And I think that was important for us to be able to put that out there uh, and renew that support. I think that gamers were really hoping we would have that announcement. So that and the fact that you know, we, don't, we don't ask you to be online once a day. We don't want you to authenticate your console um, to find out what software is valid and what software isn't. If you bought it, it's valid. Um, and there's a lot of people out there that either don't have internet access, um, you know, either daily or at, if at all, and only like to play like single player offline games. So if that's your thing, we welcome you with open arms and say, you know, you're going to be able to have that same great gameplay experience on PS4 and not be required to jump through these hoops that maybe the other guys are asking you to do. In terms of the used games and the choices that PlayStation announced this week at the conference, can you simplify it for someone who maybe missed the announcement? For a PS4, what will uh, game transactions be like? How simple will it really be? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not too dissimilar to the way that it functions today. I mean, you can buy day one digital, or you can go into a brick and mortar store and actually physically buy a real digital, or sorry, a real disc-based copy of the game. Uh, and at that point, um, there's no licensing approach to the game. I mean, it's your disc, so you're going to pop it in your PS4, you're going to play it, and at that point, if you're done with it, you can decide to you know, put it in your library or you know, loan it to a friend, sell it to someone else online, go back into a participating retailer and sell it back to an EV or whoever that might be, and that's, that's a choice that you have. Um, and I think that that's, it's, it, we, we listen loud and clear to what gamers had asked for. They certainly did not like that strategy from our competitor. Uh, and, and it was something that we had kind of, we, had, we were already you know, on down the path of kind of not not abolishing used games, uh, and we weren't sure how to best bring it to market. And we, at the end of the day, we decided let's wait till our E3 conference when the whole world is watching, and be very clear about the fact that you know we allow used games. I mean, that that was that was a big part of our announcement yesterday. Another huge part that you mentioned uh, previously is the fact that you don't need to reauthenticate with online. Like you said, a lot of people who play PlayStation don't necessarily want to play all the multiplayer features. They're offline, single player kind of gamers. In terms of the development for the PS4, does that put any impediments on making sure that, because obviously Microsoft is making that choice to make sure that they're up to date and getting new content consistently. What is PlayStation going to do to ensure that new content is still coming in, but not giving gamers that hurdle that Microsoft has placed before them with their Xbox One? Yeah, I mean, are you talking about content specifically from us to them? You're talking uh, about, in like... This, in this know, case, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think we've had a pretty active PSN over this generation, and we've seen that even things like PS Plus and the revenue that we've seen from the PlayStation Network has doubled in the last year. Uh, so we know that gamers, 
you know, want to try to attach some DLC to a game that they purchased. Um, you know, they, we certainly know that, you know, that they're going to be looking forward to added value content down the road for games like Destiny and Drive Club. We, we plan on providing that to them, but uh, on their terms, uh, you know, and in a choice I think that's easy for them to understand is like, you know, download what you want when you want, uh, take advantage of whatever offerings we have when it's convenient for you, as opposed to having it be, uh, you know, any kind of mandatory, you know, once a day online licensing, I guess, check mark, if you will, to say what's what's valid and what's not valid on a console. It just didn't seem to make sense to us. It didn't, didn't seem like something we needed to do. It's also the very first time that we actually got to see the PlayStation 4 unit. What's it going to look like? What we can expect? What has been uh, the reaction so far? Obviously, it's been less than 24 hours, but instantly, as soon as a photo's out there, there's going to be speculation and commentary. Uh, first of all, sorry, can you take us a little bit through the design of uh, the new PlayStation 4, the actual body of it, as best you can? Sure. Uh, it's. It, uh, well, I guess the easiest way to describe it is a whole lot more sharper angles and not as much as is curving as you saw on PS3. A lot of rounded sides of the PS3. Um, even when we went down to a more slimmed down version, even, you know, even at that point, there's still the, the entire top went from gloss to matte finish, but it was, again, very curved in terms of its look and feel. Um, I've had people kind of describe it as almost looks a little bit like an eraser uh, <laughs> with kind of these sharp curves. Um, but I think that, you know, it's, it, we, want, we looked at everything from size to aesthetics to color to, you know, to what's going to be uh, the most palatable for gamers. What are they going to really love to look at, uh, you know, under their, in their consoles every day when they're, when they're popping games into it. Um, so I think, you know, it's funny. When we had our, our big reveal in February in New York City, everybody was kind of up in arms, like, how how do we not sh how do you not show the console? And they were like, you know, really like wanted to see it. And then they saw it, and then they're like, looks good. You know, let's see the games. Yeah. You know, like there was a that's what we expected sort <laughs> yeah. of thing. Yeah, it's gonna be a black box that fits under your TV that plays amazing games. I'm not sure what you need it to be beyond that, but um, I think it's a good looking device, and I certainly have heard nothing but good things about the design of it. Um, it's really what's inside of it. I think that's even more important, and I think you know we built. Uh, the chipset with AMD uh, really off a very familiar architecture for a lot of developers. I mean, it's a, it's an x86 Jaguar chip, but you know if you've been making games for PC, uh, it shouldn't be all that difficult for you to jump right in and make you know amazing games for PS4 out of the gate. We with PS3 we went proprietary, and I think that was difficult for some developers to really figure out how am I going to make good games for PS3? It's going to take a bit of a learning curve for me to get my head around the architecture. This time it was not like that. We went out to the developing community and said, help us make the best console you know, for you to make the best games. And so they said, you know, it'd be great if we had a lot of memory. So, you know, eight gigs of GDDR5 RAM should get it done, right? And so there's little things like that. We kind of checked all the boxes and, and brought out this, uh, or will bring out this amazing device that I think uh, speaks to what developers want, speaks to what gamers want, and at a 399 price point, we feel solid about where we're at. Strategy. Very, very strong showing so far at E3, without question. Uh, we haven't even gotten into games yet, which is a travesty. I can't believe that shows you I know. how important the information was. Well, you kind of have to get into yeah. this stuff for year one. Uh, it's always about games, and even even in a launch year, it's incre incredibly important to be able to show the potential of the system. And you know, PS1, PS2, PS3, you know that first generation software, although impressive, sometimes doesn't you know doesn't I don't want to say maximize what the system's capable of, but sometimes it isn't the perfect showpiece. I think you look at a game like Killzone Shadowfall or even Destiny or Watch Dogs, some, some truly amazing stuff being developed for the first few months of the PS4 life cycle. And out of the gate, I think gamers are looking at this going, there's a nice big leap forward in terms of technology here. And it, it warrants the purchase. It's not like we released PlayStation 3.5. It's PS4, and I think people really see it even in the day one games. Yeah, I don't think anyone's going to possibly say this is just PS 3.5. Some big changes coming in terms of the games that are going to be individual to PlayStation 4. Can you take us through some of the titles that you know so far, proprietary to PlayStation, that will be available within the first uh, six months? Sure. So we've, we've the big four that we've shown that are Worldwide Studios first party games are, uh, you know, certainly Killzone Shadowfall probably is, I wouldn't say the crown jewel because we have some pretty good games out there, but I think it's one that so far people have really gravitated to. Killzone Universe has been very successful on PS3 and, and we've got a Vita game coming out as well, Mercenary. So I think, uh, you know, that, that IP has done really well for us, and, and, and the new game looks remarkably good. So that one uh, will be a launch game in addition to Knack, which is a platformer being developed by Mark Cerny, and he's really the, the father of a lot of great platformers in the last few generations, and he was a lead architect in the PS4 design and development, and is actually making a game for us too. So Knack looks great, 
interesting thing about Knack also is it's one of the few games out there I think that's going to be rated E for everyone. So, you know, you take home your PS4, you're probably not going to want to show shooters to, you know, the younger that's kids in your house. and murdering yeah. all the time. Hey kids, here's uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Um, you know, you want something that everybody in the family can play and Knack is going to be a great title for that. Uh, and Drive Club, which you know, you know, Evolution Studios, great heritage in racing games, and the game they've always wanted to make is really more clan-based and more based on community. And now with the PS4 and the social features, you have a game that has you know infinite replayability because you're going to join a, a clan. You're going to be part of the BMW Club of Toronto or whatever club you decide to join, and you're going to be expanding your garage and you're going to be racing against other leagues. And it really has like a, a car RPG type of a feel to it that I think a lot of people are going to love. So those are the big three at launch, but then. Not too far after that is going to be Infamous Second Son, which um, has been a surprise hit for us. The Infamous franchise has done remarkably well, uh, and this one's more of a prequel story with a different main character. So I think you have four pretty different games, uh, you know, each one a different genre that kind of does something a little bit different to show you what PS4 is capable of. But the third party support's been amazing as well. So um, even games that aren't necessarily exclusive have some exclusivity to them on PS4, like a Watch Dogs, an Assassins, or a Destiny. Those are obviously the big, huge budget titles coming to PS4. We also got to see a lot of love for incredible indie experiences, indie games that was a huge push that you saw from PlayStation this week. You didn't see that from Microsoft. It was not at the same level. Can you speak to uh, that a little bit about indie games and their position in PlayStation 4 in the coming months? Yeah, I think if there's one thing we've done remarkably well in the current generation of PS3 is you know, we went out there and we saw it after like all these indie developers that had some really creative, great ideas, but were having trouble bringing their product to market either for financial reasons or you know they you know they wanted to self-publish and didn't have an option anywhere other than PSN. Games like Journey and Flower and Unfinished Swan found homes uh, in the in the PSN and on PlayStation 3s because we are so I guess welcoming to the indie community uh, that it's really gotten out there. I think to the point where indies like to look to us first and say, you know. I want to bring my game to a mass market. I want to be able to self-publish. I want to be able to set my own price, but I need help co-marketing it, or I need I need a marketplace for people that are shopping to be able to see my game. And you know, you have Don't Starve and Outland and all these great games that are now being shown for PS4. And uh, it's great that they're all. A lot of them are premiering on PS4. Some of them are exclusive even. Uh, and we welcome that because I think you can have the big budget Blu-ray games on one hand and the smaller indie stuff and they, they are, they're great in the library together because sometimes you want a $10 game you can play for a few hours and sometimes you get a $60 huge big budget game. Um, but I, you know, I've had as many great experiences playing some of the smaller indie stuff on PS3 than I have with the Uncharted's of The Last of Us. So important to balance both. Well, thank you so much for taking the time, Matt. We really do appreciate it. Final question, it's gotta be, this is the year of the console wars. As succinctly as you can, why is PlayStation going to win? Why are gamers going to put their dollars towards a PS4 instead of an Xbox One? Well, you know, I think it's really that, that they, they believe and they trust in us, in our strategy. I think it's it, the $100 price point difference is big. I won't, I won't lie. $399 for us, $499 for Xbox is going to weigh in a lot of people's decisions. But I think at the end of the day, when you're voting for, with your dollar, you want to you want to side with a company that understands you and, and and appreciates why you game in the first place and what need that fulfills. And I think we've really done a lot to earn back gamers' trust over the last few years. And by showing this, you know, ability to have used games and and you know really not be have such a restrictive DRM policy, that in and of itself I think is enough for a lot of gamers to really put their hand up and say, we're, we're on we're on the side with PS4. We're giving our money to Sony this generation, and and we love that. It means that. They know we're listening, and, and, and they also know that we appreciate them and we're loyal to them right back. So I think that that's, if you have that as a company and a consumer, that's, that's, that's measurable in my opinion. Cannot wait for it. You're still a little bit obfuscating when it's actually coming out, though. We don't have that yet. It's, it's similar thing. We, we saw the controller, never got a chance to see the actual PS4. Now we have all this great information. Still a little tease. Nothing I can pry out of you. We, we, can't, we can't give you can't everything, you no. <laughs> So the two big remaining questions are, when's it coming out? Yeah. And how many pieces are coming to Canada? So obviously those are the ones that we're looking at now. Um, I'm not sure when those announcements will be made. You know, we have Gamescom, we have TGS, we have a couple of big shows as we get closer. All we've said so far is North America will be 2013. So, you know, be a, something you'll be able to buy as a, as a present for someone, put under the tree or give as a gift. Um, you know, we'll get a little closer to the ex that exact date as we get through the summer. Um, but we're, we're excited and we know that the retail response has been tremendous. I mean, it's pre-ordering incredibly well today. 
Um, all retailers in our meetings today have said, we want more product. So um, it's a good problem to have. Uh, and when we, we solve our way through that stuff, we're going to let gamers know. I'm Andy Burkowski here at E3 in the PlayStation, I don't want to say booth, wing of E3. Talking to Matt from PS4, uh, PlayStation Canada rather. Everything you need to know on PlayStation, keep watching. This is VGS on Talk Radio AM 640.